Okay, hello everybody and welcome to the Black Box Podcast. Today we're going to be looking at a mystery from England, going to be covering the case of Andrew Gosden. And just a little background on in the case to start off. On September 14th, 2007, 14-year-old Andrew Gosden walked out of a family home in Doncaster, and that's in Yorkshire, and boarded the train to London with a one-way ticket, then simply vanished. Now, this case is just past the 10-year anniversary of the, the time in which Andrew went missing. I first heard about this case on a series of the countdown shows that are on YouTube. So it's received quite a lot of attention over the years, and we have quite a lot of information about what happened to Andrew before he disappeared, and then next to nothing after he vanished, and after he left the King's Crossing train station in London. And some of the most notable things to remember about this day, September 14th, are Andrew's parents come home, and they expect to find their son in their house, either in their uh, cellar, the basement, or in his room, probably on his PlayStation Portable, PSP. But, of course, he's not there. That day, he did something completely out of character, where he, he went to the bank, went to a cash point or an ATM, if you will, and he withdrew the entirety of his account, which was around 200 pounds, and we often like to say that's maybe just over 400 US dollars, around 200 pounds. He went to the train station, bought a one-way ticket for 70 pounds, and uh, the return trip ticket was only 50 pence more. It would have cost 70 pounds 50, but he refused it. Then he gets on the train, and an eyewitness spots him on the train and notices that this boy is playing his PlayStation Portable throughout the entirety of the duration of the journey from Doncaster to London. What is very interesting about this is he did not bring the charger for the PlayStation Portable, which was found in his room. After he gets off the train, there is a CCTV surveillance footage of him leaving the train station in London, never to be seen again in a definitive way. There have been some rumored sightings of him after he has left the train station, but there really has not been a 100% confirmed sighting. During this uh, podcast, really going to examine one specific theory, and that is that Andrew Gosden did all this as part of a suicide plot. This is a suicide theory that we're going to discuss now. And the, re- the way I formulated this one was after, again, mentioning that um, I first heard about this on the YouTube countdowns about unsolved mysteries, instantly I was just like, this is a 14-year-old boy who went to the bank and withdrew the entirety of his account, cleaned it out, down to zero. He took everything out of his bank account. He got on a train with his PlayStation Portable, which he obviously liked to play, and he, because he was playing it for the whole duration of the journey, but didn't bring the charger, and he bought a one-way ticket when the return trip ticket was only 50 pence more. That tells me that this is someone who did not want to come home, who knew that they were never coming home, and... I really just did not feel that this was a typical runaway case. It almost just sounded very sad, you know, and I think the PlayStation charger was something that sort of tipped it that way to me, like this is some boy that just wants to get away and either try to die alone or not to spare the family any more grief and, um, you know, not to disturb the family in the sense of having them find his dead body. That was the feeling that I had. The supporting points that I would like to say for that are, why not with, why would you withdraw the entirety of the account if you thought you were coming back? For example, some people have mentioned that maybe he left his PlayStation portable charger at 
the home because he was just going to come back. He was planning on coming back and something bad happened to him along the way. Or perhaps he didn't buy the return trip ticket because he went to London to meet somebody, to meet a person, and that person had said that they were going to take him back. And I do not agree with that at all because I just don't have any feeling for that because he took the entirety of his bank account and brought it down to zero. And that's just like, if you were going to meet somebody and you had the intention of returning at home, wouldn't you at least leave five pounds in there or five dollars in there? Wouldn't you just at least leave something behind? I mean, when, it's, when you close out the account or clear out the account rather, that really tells me that that person is just done. I mean, unless he's like some type of junkie who's just absolutely desperate, but that's not the case. He had no history of drug use, absolutely not. So that was one of the big things that really pushed me toward thinking that this is a suicide. And one of the first things I thought was he probably jumped off a bridge, I don't know. That was just sort of one of the things I thought that would be very possible in a place like London, drowning. However, they have apparently um, searched the river in London very thoroughly and during the places near the bridge and there have not been any sort of um, sightings of Andrew around there. And one of the other things that I think is very supportive in the sense that, supportive of the theory that this was a suicide is that Andrew has that very distinct earmark where he has two ridges on his ear, and that's very, very noticeable. The uh, first YouTube countdown that ever told me about this said he is easily identifiable by his distinct ear formation, the double ridge on his ear. This was a nationwide campaign that had been launched and is still coming up all the time over the internet. I heard about it in America. and. It would just be very noticeable, and those are the things that people would remember, and if he were still somewhere in England, he would probably, someone probably would have been tipped off. Again, not always possible. You know, people all can go missing for longer periods of time than 10 years and still actually be alive. However, that is something also that just sort of did not sit too well with me that no one had really seen like a very definitive sighting of someone with that very distinct double ear ridge and like the re other reasons that I don't um, feel that this was something else other than suicide is one of the theories that is actually sort of a theory supporting murder is that Andrew got off the train in London, walked out of the station, and you can see a reflection of a person in the train station window. And they think that is a man that Andrew was walking to, and he walked to the man to um, meet him, and he was like abducted and um, sadly murdered. And I just thought that was a very, very weak lead. They saw the reflection of what looks like to be a man at a train station. How do you know who he was waiting for? How do you know what he was doing there? It's a train station. There are going to be many other people that are not involved in this case, and that felt like way too much of an assumption. If you look at the sort of things that you do know, a 14-year-old boy does something very abnormal and out of character. He leaves home without telling anyone, empties his bank account down to zero, gets on a train without taking the charger for his PlayStation Portable, which he plays for the whole journey on the train. He, he really, really liked video games. And then he is never seen from again. Not to mention he also bought the one-way ticket when the um, return ticket was only 50 pence more. That tells me this is somebody who wanted to disappear. And I think that if this had been a runaway, not nah, 10 years, I think there would have been a, a little bit more definitive evidence uh, turning up, or at least a lead, maybe some more definitive sightings or 
similar things such as that. And we just, we don't really find that. And it's very sad, and his family has gone through so much, and they have really, really desperately tried to get him back, and it really turns out to be a real tragedy, but he probably had some sort of awareness that it would be very, very heavy on them. He probably felt that this would be a very, a very emotional thing for his parents to endure, and he was just like, I just want to get out of here. And like, I just don't think that there is enough evidence to support the fact that he was abducted or that he was murdered. It's all just assumption. Who would he have met in London? Does anyone have an idea? Where did that person take him? What did they do? That, there's way too much guesswork associated with that. So that sort of lead, uh, leads me to believe that the simpler option is that this was a suicide and that Andrew made some effort to sort of just get away from a place that was making him feel bad. He wanted to just get far away and then end his own life. And I really feel, I even feel weird just talking like that. And one of the things his family says that is against the suicide theory is that they just said there was no sign of depression, there was no sign of any sort of bad feeling at all in him, but he was 14, he was a teenager. Um, these, these events happen all the time, and even like at my university, the uh, two people that committed suicide while I was in university, um, people said the same things about them, they showed no signs of depression, they showed no signs of being suicidal, Many people are um, not going to show much on the surface when, they come, when it comes to something like that. I believe that's even the subject of a Keanu Reeves movie, uh, Permanent Record, I believe. Um, sorry, it's been a long time, but I think that even, that's even the subject of that, that someone takes their own life when they seem completely happy, completely normal, and everything is going for them. So it's very difficult to try and understand... It's, I'm sorry, it's very difficult to try and say that someone would not be suicidal, especially at the age of 14. You know, teenagers have so many different emotions and feelings going up and down all the time, and it's difficult to know, and we may never get a def definitive answer. However, it's just, if you look at the facts that he bought a one-way ticket, he took his bank account down to zero, and he didn't tell anyone where he was going. This just sounds like, to me, someone that does not want to be found, and someone wants to, be, to disappear off of the face of the earth, and... I mean, if this were a runaway, don't you think there'd be more things missing? More clothes? More objects from the room? I mean, it's possible, but... I mean, wouldn't you even bring a change of underwear if you were going to be running away? If you spent 70 pounds on the ticket, you only have 130 pounds just to start a new life. I mean, I understand maybe at 14 we're not the best when it comes to planning, but to me that's just like, that does not sound like someone who was planning to leave and come back. Or that does not sound like someone who was planning to leave and continue anywhere. And you know, it's like, the first time I heard about this case, as I said, that red flag just went up and I was like, I feel that this is a suicide, and I felt like he went just to get far away from this place that was giving him these very dark feelings, these negative feelings, and he never wanted to go back. And it's just very, very tragic, and it's a very sad for the family, and we hope that one day that expanding the discussion like this can bring them closure and trying to get some answers by sharing information on the internet will hopefully bring an answer to the story.